Hello everyone. Today's video is to bring you a summary of all the events that happened in the Vallo Daybell case yesterday, June 10th, 2020. So we're going to start with the official court documents from Chad's hearing. The judge read the charges, even though the defense waived that because I guess they didn't want to hear him. But let's go over them. There are two charges. Destruction, alteration, or concealment of evidence, a felony. There are two charges. One is based on the dates of September 22nd to June 9th. The other is based on the dates of September 8th to June 9th, but they both read as follows. The defendant, Chad Guy Daybell, on or between those stated dates, did willfully conceal and or did aid and abet another to willfully conceal human remains, knowing that said remains were about to be produced, used, and or discovered as evidence in a felony proceeding, inquiry, and or an investigation authorized by law, with the intent to prevent it from being so produced, used, and or discovered. Those are the basic charges against Chad. Uh, two of those, they both carry, well, they both carry a five-year imprisonment, but no, no doubt that would be concurrent, and a $10,000 fine, so, you know... They're lightweight charges, but I think we're going to see more very soon. The other filing that's important is uh, from the bond discussion. The judge set bail in the amount of $1 million. The defendant is ordered, as a condition of bail or release, to comply with the following. The defendant must sign a waiver of extradition. The defendant shall reside within the boundaries of Bonville, Jefferson, Madison, and Fremont counties in the state of Idaho. That seems pretty liberal to me, but, you know, what do I know? The judge also said, The defendant shall provide the court with his current address. The defendant shall keep in regular contact with his attorney. The defendant shall appear for all court appearances. The defendant shall obey all laws of the state of Idaho and the United States of America. The defendant will sign up for pretrial services. The defendant shall have absolutely no contact with the victim's families and or any of the state's witnesses in this case. Contact includes, but not limited to, Verbal contact, written, visual, text, email, internet, and telephonic. Such contact shall also include contact through third parties, which means they can't share a lawyer. Haha, -ha, take that, Chad. The defendant must wear an ankle monitor 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. He must have the ankle monitor in place before he is released from the Fremont County Jail. Any violations of the geographical limitations imposed herein must be reported immediately to the Fremont County Sheriff's Office and the court. The defendant is hereby notified that while under the order to wear the ankle monitor, intentionally leaving the area of restriction, except for the purpose of obtaining emergency medical care, may be prosecuted as a crime of escape and subject the defendant to penalties in the Idaho Code section, yada, yada, yada. So those are the conditions of his bond if he actually meets bond and is able to get out of jail. We have two other legal filings that happened yesterday to go over. The first one, attorney Mark L. Means. This is Lori Vallow's attorney. He filed a motion for release to defense counsel regarding the search warrant that was executed at Chad's home on the 9th. And it says, comes now the defendant, Mrs. Lori Vallow Daybell, by and through her attorney of record, Mark L. Means, and moves this court for an order of release to defense counsel. The filed documents, exhibits, pleadings, warrants, applications, affidavits, corresponding orders, and or records presented to the above court in regards to the search warrant number, blah, 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 issued and signed by the court on June 5th. This is Mark Means saying, we want this information. It does go on to say that the defendant does not request that this matter be unsealed, but that the information is released under seal to her lawyer. We'll see what happens with that. Um, they might be a little nervous. They should be. So, here you go. The other court filing that's a matter of interest is... The uh, amended motion for the appointment of a special prosecuting attorney in this case. Now, generally, we see a special prosecutor if there's a conflict of interest, which I don't think that's the case here, or perhaps if there's political or controversial prosecutions that are about to happen. It's kind of a big deal. So we see that has been filed in Idaho as well. Fremont County prosecuting attorney pursuant to the Idaho Code, blah, blah, blah moves the court to order appointing a special prosecuting attorney to investigate and, if necessary, prosecute the above-mentioned case and any other matters arising out of this case. So I think that may be kind of a way to, to make sure the prosecutor can handle Chad's issues and Lori's issues and go after them both at the same time. So that was filed yesterday as well. Perhaps the most important update yesterday were the statements released by the various families connected to this case. The first one 
The Woodcock family and the Ryan family issued a joint statement, and it reads as such. The Woodcocks and the Ryans are confirming that the human remains found by law enforcement on Chad Daybell's property are indeed our beloved J.J. and Tylee. We are filled with unfathomable sadness that these two bright stars were stolen from us and only hope that they died without pain or suffering. Official statements from the Rexburg Police, the medical examiner, and the FBI will be released soon. We ask that you respect our family's privacy while we grieve. We have only just been told of the loss of our loved ones and need time to process. We are not granting interviews at this time and hope you all understand that this is the worst news we will ever get in our lives and we want to be left alone for the time being. Thank you. This statement comes from the Cox family in Mesa, Arizona. The Cox family, Janice, Barry, Summer, Melanie, and Ian, is deeply saddened by the recent findings in the investigation into the whereabouts of JJ and Tylee. Their love for them knows no bounds. The family has maintained a strong hope and belief that they were alive and well. With that hope and belief apparently shattered, they struggle to find comfort and hope in this potential new reality. They miss JJ and Tylee very much. The family is very grateful to those who have expended so much time and effort in trying to locate them. The family expresses their deep and abiding love for JJ and Tylee. The family will continue to closely watch the developing situation and will anxiously await the pending conclusions with heavy hearts. The family extends their gratitude to all those who have expressed their love and concern for JJ and Tylee and feels the strength of their faith and prayers. The third statement we have is from the Daybell family, and it reads as follows. The events of the past nine months have weighed heavily on our family. It has been one of the most difficult things we have ever had to go through. Some in our extended family are still struggling to accept the reality that Chad could have been involved in something so terribly wrong. On behalf of myself, my wife Heather, and our four children, we express our most sincere sympathies to Larry and Kay, and to JJ and Tylee's entire extended families. We are devastated by today's news and the apparent role that Chad has played in what has transpired. Heather and I have communicated many times in person and by phone with Larry and Kay over the past several months. They have been examples of courage, strength, and kindness to us throughout this difficult trial they have been forced to endure. Throughout this ordeal, we have supported one another in the pursuit of truth and will continue to do so. They have been praying for our family as we have prayed for them. Our heartfelt love and prayers continue to go out to them and their family at this very difficult time. We also continue to pray for Tammy and Chad's adult children and their spouses. Because of the difficulty of the situation, our relationship with them has been significantly strained. As a result, we have had no contact with them or Chad for the last many months. We do not know where his children stand at this time. As such, we ask for patience and compassion for them and for all of our extended family as we cope with the horrific events that may have come to light. Matt and Heather Daybell. All right, moving on to some other news. Here's a video clip from Arizona's Channel 3 News regarding a piece of information that I hadn't heard before, and it's very interesting. So I'm going to be quiet, let you listen to it, and then we'll talk about it after. But I can tell you that a, a few things have happened uh, in the past month. Know that after we interviewed um, Lori Vallow's uh, mother and sister, uh, investigators did serve a search warrant at the mother and father's home in St. George, Utah. So could have been some evidence they found there. I, I don't know at this point, but obviously something happened uh, to tip them off or to say, go back out there. We know that they had searched that area before, but something led them to go yesterday and to dig in a certain area in the backyard, and that is where they found these human remains. So there you have it. Lori Vallow's parents were served with a search warrant recently. Is it connected to the search at Chad's property? Possibly, but we don't know for sure. Right now, everything is speculation, but all we can do is bring you the pieces of the puzzle, and hopefully we'll be able to put it together quickly. Now, the image that you're looking at on your screen, this was an image tweeted out by Justin Lum, whose link is in the description of this video. This image just shows the police wrapping up their search of the property yesterday afternoon. The next image shows adults at Chad's home moving some furniture out of Chad's house. Very interesting. All right, next up, I have a several slides for you. These are from East Idaho News, and these are just some additional images of the search of the property things that we may not have seen before. So I'm just going to let them play till the end of the video. 
Feel free to pause it, zoom in, check out the photographs. A lot of interesting things here. Until next time, until there's more news, take care and stay safe out there, everyone.